Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to cross the Oresund once again and we're going to go back to Shelland in Denmark and revisit a brewery that's featured on the channel a number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last couple of years. They are still a relatively new addition to the Danish beer scene and I think it's fair to describe this brewery as one that is very solid all round. They do quite a few IPAs but they're not afraid to try different things either. But the the beer we're going to have a look at today is one of their latest releases. It's a winter 2022 release. It's a style that I very much enjoy and also one that we've not tried from them yet. And we don't get to review too many of these beers on the channel actually. So I'm definitely curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. So hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head to Vidov, which is to the southwest of Copenhagen. I'm hoping I've pronounced that correctly. It's spelt like Vidovre. But yeah, we're going to go to Vidovre, or Vidov anyway, and we're going to have a look uh, another beer from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative. So this particular beer is called Hibernator. It comes in at 7% ABV and this one is their Doppelbock. So uh, yeah, as many of you might know, the Doppelbock is a style of lager beer that originates in Germany. These beers come from the city of Einbeck. And when they arrived in Munich, the, the Münchners made fun of the way the Einbeckers said uh, Beck beer, so it sounded like Bock, which means goat, and that's why many of these beers actually have a picture of a goat on their uh, on their artwork. You know, if you think of the Einer Celebrator, uh, that's probably the most famous example of the Doppelbock around. Paulaner Salvatore, I believe, was the very uh, was one of the first ones uh, out of the Munich Six breweries. But yeah, this one should be really interesting. As I said to you, this beer was released for winter. 2022 and I picked this one up at the Beer Hive in Amar in Copenhagen which is where I get most of my Danish stuff actually so big shout out to Jessica and Nicolina once again I'll put the link to their Facebook and Instagram pages in the video description for you below so check them out as I say they've got a great selection of Danish stuff and other random things as well but let's crack on with this review then and see what this beer is going to have in store for us one of the first Danish Doppelbox I've reviewed on the channel I think the only other one we might have had would have been from uh, Abeltoff Gord's Brewery, come to think of it. But yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative before and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the support you give is massively appreciated and remember you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefetch or whatever it is you happen to be interested in uh, if I've reviewed beers from your local area just put that into the search bar if they're there they'll pop up Otherwise, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in the Danish playlist, along with a number of other things, and that is constantly being added to, as I've mentioned to you. But there, let's go on to my brewery notes then to chat a little bit about Slowburn Brewing Cooperative then. So, as I've mentioned to you already, Slowburn Brewing Cooperative is based in Vudov, or Vidovra, however we pronounce that, which is to the southwest of Copenhagen, the Danish capital, on Sjælland, the easternmost of the main Danish islands. And the company was founded back in 2018 by Amelie Knage, Stefano Ereni and Andrew Keaton. So Amelie worked at uh, Ull Brood, uh, which is one of the Mikeler bars and Shiosk in Copenhagen. And she also started one of the first kombucha breweries in the city as well, which was called Valdberg Kombucha. But she gradually moved into home brewing beer and then into professionally brewing beer. But these days she assists in the brewing and she also manages the sales and distribution side of Slowburn Brewing Co cooperative. <clears throat> Stefano is the head brewer. He's originally from Milan in Italy and he studied biotechnology before going on to work at Birificio Rurale in his home country before moving to Denmark to work for White Labs Yeast. And he also worked at the Fermentorum beer bar as well. Uh, Ulla Brod and Fermentorum are actually very close to each other, very near to the uh, the Copenhagen Central Station. And of course, you've got Schuttbergen down there, which is a great place to visit as well. Uh, Andrew, on the other hand, is originally from the US and he moved over to Copenhagen back in 2010 when the whole Nordic beer scene was just in its infancy but he comes from a background in software engineering and development and he deals with the finance and social media side of the brewery but he also experiments with sour beer and barrel aging as well and I have seen that Slowburn have released a few 
uh, beers from their barrel series now uh, and I've seen a couple of sours so I do need to make sure I try some of the wild ales that they're producing as well that's something I will keep an eye out for over the next little while but uh, as of December 2022 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced 65 different kinds of beer thus far and um, this brewery I quite like because they do both New England IPAs and also West Coast IPAs fairly regularly one of my favorite beers from them would be the Octo Pills which appears every so often but that's quite popular and um, so you have to be quite quick if you want to get a hold of that but yeah like I say they do try quite a few different styles we've had an Imperial Stout from them we've had um yeah, we've had an Imperial Stout, we've had the different kinds of IPAs, uh, we've had the Octo Pills, now we've got the Doppelbock, I forget what other styles we've tried from them, but uh, yeah, no, these guys are not scared to try different things, and that's one of the things that I really like about this brewery as well. Always solid beers and uh, different styles to have a look at too. So um, yeah, that is all I can really tell you about Slowburn Brewing Cooperative for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys though, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can of course check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's go on and have a wee look at the beer itself. So um, if I remember correctly, this beer cost me about 50, I want to say maybe 55 Danish kroner, I forget exactly what I paid for this one, but 55 Danish kroner translates to roughly about 70 Swedish, so that's about seven euros, uh, somewhere in the region of six pounds fifty sterling and maybe about eight dollars American something like that Danish beer is of course a little bit more expensive the currency is very strong at the moment it will vary a little bit uh, as time goes on but this video was filmed in December 2022 like I mentioned before but uh, yeah the beer itself does look pretty nice you can see plain silver top on the can there it's 440 milliliters incidentally which is a little bit short of an American pint but uh, yeah, uh, so as I mentioned, this one is a 7% Doppelbock. I told you a little bit of the story of the Doppelbock style earlier on. Remember, this is a lager, and the definition of a lager beer is that it uses bottom fermenting yeast, which ferments at a lower temperature, usually 8 to 12 degrees Celsius. Um, so yeah, basically the Doppelbock is a very strong malty lager. But 7% ABV is not the strongest Doppelbock that I've come across, actually. But yeah, um, we look at the artwork for you again. There you can see the nice goat there from Slowburn. There is the Slowburn Brewing Cooperative symbol and uh, it's also on the back there as well. But uh, yeah, I don't think we need to say anything else about the appearance of the can and things. Let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Very curious about this and a big thank you again to Jessica and Nicolina for keeping this beer aside for me. I think this one was actually released in early November, come to think of it. It had been around for a wee bit so Jessica and Nicolia were very good to keep this one aside for me because I didn't want to miss out on this. I hadn't been to Copenhagen for uh, a wee while, actually. So, um, yeah, there we go. So, as you can see with this uh, this beer, it's poured pretty much as you would expect from a Doppelbock. So before the head disappears on this one, I think we can say that it has a 75 yeah, maybe like a three-quarter, two-third finger of a frothy, I would say kind of fawn-coloured head. There's some nice, there's small bubbles in there, a few bigger ones up toward the top, but it does look very, very nice, I have to say. In terms of the colour of this one, I'd say this is actually a, it's got a good little bit of ruby colour to it. I mean, Doppelbox can vary between being very red like this, or they can be really kind of dark and sort of... um. How do you say, you know, they can be kind of dark, they can be sort of bright red and chestnutty, or they can be like a really dark stained mahogany. This one's kind of somewhere in the middle, and it's actually pretty clear, this beer as well. Um, so remember, the colour of your beer depends on, one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role, because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise, and thus you get a darker colour of beer. But any barrel ageing that you do, or any adjuncts that you put in, will affect the colour of the beer as well. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to Doppelbox, you do get barrel-aged ones, actually. But uh, yeah, you do get big barrel-aged uh, Doppelbox, but they're not madly common, if that makes sense. So um, yeah, this one does look pretty nice, but definitely one of the brighter Doppelbox I've come across. And I'm not sure how well you guys will be able to see it um, in this on, on the camera there. But this beer is actually pretty clear. It's got a little bit of a natural hazy character to it. But remember, um, German Lagers tend to be brewed with all barley malt so you're not going to get the haze and things you're going to get from oats and wheat and stuff like that in these it depends on the yeast of course as well but yeah this one i think um it looks like it's been filtered actually 
But we might see there might be a little bit of sediment and stuff in the bottom of the can. We'll see when we put the rest of it in later. But appearance wise, not too much else to say about this one. One or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass, a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there. But overall, it does look really nice and you can see the head has just faded away to be a sort of thinner foamy layer. But yeah, I think we can take a wee look at the aroma of this one and see what we're going to get. So let's do this. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm going to say straight away, the aroma of this beer comes off as very, very authentic. Yeah, so that's a good sign. For me, when it comes to these traditional German, Czech, Austrian sort of lager styles, what I want from these is for them to be close to what you would drink uh, in these countries. And I've got a feeling, I've just got a feeling with this one, it's going to be very close to that. I think it said on the untapped face they used a lot of Munich malt in this one, so it's not surprising, actually. Um, but yeah, the aroma of this is absolutely lovely. Um, so it gets a big thumbs up for me. This one gives you everything you'd want. You've got a bit of toastiness in there, you've got the big breadiness, you've got the brown sugar, you've got the fruits, and you've just got that little bit of smooth, uh, noble, hoppy character coming out of the beer. Gives you everything you would want. So let's try and break that aroma down for you and just describe it a wee bit more in depth so on the um yeah on the hoppy oh i'm not saying on the hoppy side of things on the malty side of things we always start with the malt so yeah you can smell the backbone of this beer you've got a lovely little bit of that sort of fresh german rye bread in there you've got a bit of bread crust underneath with a bit more kind of grainy dryness to it there's one or two little woody characters in there and almost a little touch of nuttiness but yeah you've got the bread crust and you've got the big sweet german rye bready character coming out of it so yeah i really like how that um i do really like how that goes together um yeah so as i say toasty bread like big toasty bread crust sweet rye bread in there yeah, toasty bread crust, sweet rye bread, a little bit of nutty character, a little bit of woodiness. And then above that, you've got a few other things going on. You do get a few different layers of bread in this beer. There's a, definitely a bit of a lighter wholemeal kind of brown bread. And you've also got some nice bright white bready character as well. So uh, yeah, the way the aroma in this one goes together, I think, is really... Um, yeah, the way the, the white bread goes together is really nice. But yeah, wholemeal... Uh, brown bread, a little bit of white bready character too, and then you start to get the brown sugary notes out of this one. Now the brown sugars are quite interesting because there's a little bit of variance in there. You've got a bit of sweet McVitie's digestive biscuit for sure, and I do get a little bit of a brighter caramel, but there's a lot of toastiness in there and also an element of leathery character uh, too, but usually the leathery notes are... Um, yeah, usually the leathery notes are an indicator of a slightly longer warp boil. And I don't know with Doppelbox if they tend to give them an overly long warp boil or if it's just the kind of type of malts and the lagering process that does it. But yeah, there's definitely a bit of that more leathery brown sugar in there. You've got a bit of toasty caramel, also a bit of sweeter caramel and some nice kind of McVitie's digestive biscuits. But um, yeah, the way, the way the aroma goes together in this one it's really quite um it's really quite nice actually i like how this how the the malty side of this beer goes together as i said it's very very authentic and quite often what i find with the nordic brewed examples of doppelbox because it is a fairly popular winter style up here actually and um, what you often find with these is that the flavor profile is really authentic but they just feel that little bit lighter and cleaner because of the water quality so um yeah it's kind of interesting but malty wise you can't knock this beer at all it's, it gives you everything you would want from the style so very authentic let's look at the hoppy and fruity side of the the beer so on the hoppy side of things um green component i would say you've got a good little bit of um with the hoppy side of this beer you've got a nice little bit of earthiness in there a little bit of herbal character you know the smoothness but you've also got a wee bit of a um you do have a nice little bit of floral aromaticity to it and also a bit of grassiness, but overall, the green component of this beer, while the gra the green side of it is quite light, the earthy and kind of slightly herbal character are very smooth, and it, it does give you, again, what you would expect of the, the Doppelbox style. So, yeah. I do wonder if it's Northern Brewer that's been used in this. That's obviously a very, it's a very popular hop 
to use when it comes to uh, to German Doppelbox actually. So yeah, the aroma of this one, as I said, is, is pretty damn authentic actually. So I like that. I do appreciate that with this beer. Um, yeah. On the fruity side of things then, it's kind of interesting. This one's got a, a few different things going on. So when you sugar the beer up a little bit, you get a touch of a kind of raisiny, um, you do get a touch of a kind of raisiny sharpness in the beginning, but underneath that you've got more kind of oily plummy characters. There's a little bit of fig in there. You have got a few, you know, you have got a few more dry fruity notes in there. Definitely some figs as well. So raisins, plums, figs, a wee bit of black currant, and maybe a bit of a more oily blackberry. And there are wee hints of like a kind of dainty and sultana type quality to the beer as well. And these are all things that you can often expect uh, to find when it comes to this style. But the more that I smell of this beer, the more the kind of leathery brown sugars come out, the more some of the kind of drier side of the bread comes out. But yeah, aroma wise, I think it is very, very nice. So um, yeah, this beer from its aroma gets a big thumbs up from me it gives you everything you would want from the doppelbox style and this is a style that i do enjoy uh, so it's one that i always keep an eye out for but as I always say take a wee bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it but we are now going to try this one so yeah this one is the hibernator a seven percent doppelbock from slowburn brewing cooperative in vudov which is to the southwest of copenhagen on sealand in denmark let's get stuck into this one slanju skull cheers Yeah, that's pretty nice. And it is kind of what I was saying earlier that you often get from the Nordic examples of this style. Um, it's very, it's mouthfeel is very light and very clean, but it does give you everything that you would want from the style. The other thing that's coming to mind is because we're getting, you know, you've seen how long it was since I took a sip of the beer. The aftertaste in this one has got a lot of kind of toasty bread crust to it. So that's kind of interesting too. Hmm. But yeah, that's nice. And you know, this is one of the things that I guess you have to straddle the line with with a Doppelbock. You know, you want them to be big and oily and flavorful and sweet, but at the same time, it is a lager beer. And they're, the, you know, this one it's 7%. You can get the big ones that are 10, 11% and stuff like this, usually from the, usually from breweries like this that are more kind of uh, craft. And this is, again, Slowburn, they quite like to do the lager beers more traditionally. Whereas the IPAs, you know, they play around and are experimental and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the, the thing with the Doppelbock is you kind of have to straddle the line between making them big and bold and sippers, but also giving them an element of drinkability because, like I say, it is a lager beer. So, yeah. But yeah, flavor-wise, this is really damn nice. Actually, I like how this. I do like how this goes together. Um, but like I say, it's one of the more kind of bready, dry doppelbox I think that I've come across. But the other flavors are all there too. But you know, you get these little leanings and nuances when it comes to different beer styles. So let's try and break this one down then, and just describe it for you that wee bit more in depth as we always do, but I do like this one. I like how this is a wee bit different from what we've had in recent times. So, middle third of your palate then, you can feel that nice kind of, you can feel that nice sort of dry, toasty, bread crusty character. That forms the backbone of the beer. It's like a rye bread bread crust. Really reminds me of the fresh rye bread that I had uh, in Germany. So, yeah, nice, fresh, dry uh, bread crust in there. Further forward on that, uh, further forward on that middle third of your palate, you get a nice little bit of woodiness 
coming out of the beer. As I said, I was picking that up in the aroma. I always get a little touch of woodiness out of these. Uh, and there's potentially just a little touch of nuttiness into the aftertaste as well. You get these woody nutty flavours just embedded in the bread crust. But above that, you've got this dense layer. You've got this nice dense layer of... Um, yeah, you have this nice dense layer of kind of big sweet rye bread. So getting a lot of that out of this one. Yeah, so big sort of sweet but quite dense rye bread in there. And that's actually, there is quite a contrast between the base layer of bread crust and the sort of sweeter rye bread, which is really interesting. But above that, above that I am getting a lighter kind of layer of wholemeal brown bread and then a layer of white bread. And I think that's the wholemeal brown bread and the white bread are probably the Munich malts. Um, you know, you've got, I think it's probably different kinds of crystal malt in this one that are giving you the, the kind of darker colour and stuff like this. Um, so yeah, the 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 I think yeah I do reckon just from the flavors in this as well I think this is probably some kind of um there's probably one or two different kinds of crystal malt in this, um potentially from the dryness maybe a wee tiny touch of carafa or something as well but carafa would give you far more of a kind of roasty ish note than this beer has but as I say if you use it in a very small amount it might give you that but like I say. Well fired bread crust, a more dense, um, a more dense kind of sweet rye bready layer. You've got the wholemeal brown bready layer in there as well, and then you've got a white bready layer sitting above that. Um to what in that white bready layer, toward the front of that middle third of your palate, you do get a little bit of a Jacob's cream crackery note out of the beer, which is quite interesting. So yeah, I do like how that, um, yeah, as I say, I do like how that goes together. Um, so on top of the white bread, you do get the more brown sugary notes out of this beer. And it's kind of like a big circle sitting on top of it in the middle of your palate. You can feel there's a layer of a really kind of leathery, there's a layer of a really like leathery brown sugary character to this one. Um, and then... Um, on top of that, so you've got the leathery brown sugar, then you can feel in the dead centre of your palate there's a sweet caramelly, you know, and they're like a straight up sweet caramel. You can feel that in the middle of your palate. Then as you move further out from that, you get more of a kind of toasty brown sugar. And then as you reach the edges of that circle again, you've got a more McVitie's digestive biscuity character. This one. So yeah, base of a leathery brown sugar, then sweet caramel, toasty caramel, and then a little bit of a McVitie's digestive biscuity character so that's yeah that is quite interesting with this beer i have to say but yeah i think that covers the middle third of the palate in this beer uh, really nicely so on the back third of the palate then you've got more bready character to this one it's more yeasty as well so the border region between middle and back third of your palate You've got a nice little bit of, um, as I say, you've got a nice little bit of bready, um, as I say, it's just bready build up, but it's quite a dry bready character. There's actually more and more, you've got this almost like kind of slightly spicy brown bready note in that border region, but the base of the back third of your palate, again, you've got that really dry kind of toasty bread crust. Then on top of that, you've got the rye bready notes once again. Um, So yeah, dry bread crust, the rye bread layer is definitely taller and more kind of airy as well. And again, it gives you that more kind of dry grainy character. Remember, more, more dry bitter flavours come out further back on the palate, sweeter flavours come out further forward. So yeah, the rye bread layer is definitely taller and more airy, but still a bit drier. You've got the wholemeal brown bread kind of sitting on top of that. Then you've got the white bread in there as well. And I would actually say that the, the wholemeal brown bread and the white bread are a little bit sweeter in a way. But above all of these layers, you've got this more kind of airy, yeasty kind of character. And it's got a little bit of honeycomb to it, a little bit of a crackery, woody 
flavour to it. But yeah, you've got this really airy light bread above all of that. But definitely on that back third of the palate, you can feel the flavour is taller. And then as you come further forward, it just condenses down and squashes together. So um, yeah, the way that the beer goes together from that perspective is really quite nice. So, um, yeah, the way that this beer goes together, I think, is um, on the malty and yeasty side of things, I think is, um, is really, really nice. On the, I think we said everything we need about the malty yeasty side of the beer at this point, to be honest with you. So on the hoppy side of things, it's kind of what we got from the aroma, to be honest with you. But like I say, this is definitely one of the more kind of drier and toasty, bready examples of... Uh, Double box that I've had. This one, this one's a lot more bready than other ones, which might be more kind of brown sugary and leathery, actually. So yeah, uh, in terms of the hoppy side of the beer, it's kind of what we expected from the aroma. Back corners of the palate, there's a nice little bit of um, yeah, there is a nice little bit of a kind of earthy character there. But as you move further forward along the sides of the palate, you've got a little bit of a more kind of herbal note to it. And as you push toward the kind of front corners of the tongue, you've got a bit more of a kind of floral aromaticity. So the floral aromaticity of this one is a wee bit, the floral aromaticity in this beer is a little bit smoother. And then round the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and more grassy, actually. So... Um, yeah, that, that's really showing you that kind of typical German noble character. The, the green, the, the grassiness and the floral character in this beer is definitely a little bit brighter. Then uh, it's definitely a little bit brighter than I've come across in the... Uh, yeah, definitely a little bit brighter than, I've come, than I came across in the aroma, but that's a typical character of German noble hops. But yeah, the earthy and herbal note is also a little bit more prominent. But I really would love to know if it was... Um, I really would love to love to know if it was Northern Brewer that they put in this one because as I say that's quite a that is quite a popular hop to use when it comes to brewing Doppelbox in Germany. But yeah, let's go on to the kind of front third of your palate and the fruitiness of the beer. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you've got a nice little bit of um, you do have a nice little bit of kind of bready build up in there. So I would say. Um, Yeah, I'd say it's more, again, you've still got this quite dry, rye bready character coming out of this beer, but then the base of the front third of your palate, you've got the bread crust in there and a slightly sweeter side to the rye bread. And above that, you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. And the fruity side of things with this one, it has got a bit more dry fruity character than I, uh, yeah, it has got a good bit more dry fruity character than I thought it would have, but um, yeah, it goes together quite, um, it goes together quite nicely in that side of things. And the, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out, because this beer, it actually has, at the front third of your palate, you get a little bit of this kind of brandy soaked fruit loaf type vibe to it just in the base at the back of that front third of your palate and everything else sits on top so when you take the beer in so yeah when you take this beer in you do have a nice little bit of um yeah when you take the beer in you've got a nice little bit of a kind of I would say a little bit of raisiny sharpness, but not overly much. There's a little bit of, there's not really much plum in the way of this one. I actually get quite a lot of, you get a little bit of prune, but mainly it's kind of dates and sultanas on that back third of your palate. There's also a good little bit of an oily pear in there, but as you move toward the middle of that front third of your palate, it's a lot more kind of figgy. And then into the front half of the front third of your palate, you've got more of a, yeah, you do have more of a, kind of black there is a little bit of a black currenty note to this one but the, the fruity character this is where i would say the beer diverges the flavor diverges from the aroma quite a little bit the fruity character in this one is a lot more like dry fruits 
then um, the aroma would have you believe. So yeah, as I say, a little touch of raisin on top, then quite a lot of date, quite a lot of sultana as you move forward, a little bit of fig, and then we touch a black currant. And I don't get so much, there's a little bit of blackberry at the kind of front tip of your tongue, but the fruity flavour in this one is a lot more datey, a lot more sultana, like there's oily pear in there. Yeah, and you can feel the greeniness of this beer pushing out. Like I've said, overall, this Doppelbock is definitely more bready and kind of dry than a lot of the other ones I've come across in, uh, in recent times. So that's worth bearing in mind with this particular beer. Um, but yeah, I like this. I do like how this goes together. Let's round off with a wee look at the mouthfeel then. So for me, mouthfeel of this beer, it's kind of mid-bodied to top end of mid-bodied. The carbonation is smooth. The beer does have that nice kind of clean mouthfeel to it. Yeah, like I say, it does have that nice kind of clean mouthfeel to it, which you expect of a Nordic brewed beer. That just kind of, it's just par for the course. But um, yeah, as I said, overall for me, this Doppelbock is, it's got a good little bit of grainy dryness to it. It's not overly bitter, but you could misconstrue the few that like, the, the, the dryness that you get out of this beer is maybe equivalent to about 40-ish IBUs. But yeah, you've got a big grainy dryness to this one. The Malkus have said dryness, smoothness, a little bit of sweetness. Um... And yeah, as I say, but as I say, more a bready leaning uh, Doppelbock for sure. The fruity character in this one is a little bit, yeah, the fruity character in this one is kind of wet, um, but it's also got a little bit of oily note to it, and it's quite a dry, fruity flavour that you get out of the beer. But overall, it's really quite nice, this one. I think probably this beer is about 20-ish IBUs, but the dryness of the malt base gives you the impression of a little bit more than that. But overall... I do like how this beer uh, how this beer goes together. So yeah, interesting stuff. So yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. This has been a really interesting Doppelbock to try. It's a style that I very much enjoy. And this one really showed a different side of the, the style. You know, it really is a more kind of bready, grainy example of it. But um, yeah, interesting stuff. So well done to Slowburn Brewing Cooperative for this beer. But yeah, this was the Hibernator, a 7% Doppelbock from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative in Fedovra or a Vidov, as I think they would say in Danish, to the southwest of Copenhagen on Sjælland in Denmark. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative as well. We will no doubt return to these guys again at some point in the near future. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Check out my social media, check out theirs, and I'll catch you guys in the very near future. Slanget, skull, cheers.